Our guest on the podcast today is an amazing student and a bright guy who went on to get overall 8.5 on the IELTS test at the age of 15. And not only that, this guy pulled off impressive 15, 20 on the SAT test. And I, I just feel like an idiot <laughs> sitting next to him. I, I think when I was 15, I could barely speak English, but this guy already sounds very much like a native. After like six months of preparation, after doing like beginner books, like elementary, intermediate, I had my, my first mock test mm -hmm. and I got 18-18. Uh, 18-18. Yeah. That I got basically demotivated because I thought that my level was much higher. There is sort of unpleasant story happened when I took my first SAT test. Mm -hmm. So just two days before the SAT test, I broke my hand. So basically, yeah. Oh, I remember you walking around with a yeah. cast on your hand. I basically didn't, did not kind of calculate the powers oh. and I punched the wall with all my power. And basically my hand- Guys, don't try it at home, please. Never do that. <laughs> never do that. Yeah. Yes, never do that. So basically my hand broke and I was not able to write. Do you ever sometimes like sit and uh, look back and reflect on the time yeah, you I had do. here? I do. What, what are the things you would have done differently if you could do it all over? I was influenced by the peer pressure. Basically, I picked up some bad habits, like I went to the game clubs or um, didn't, do home, didn't do the homework or skipped some classes. And I wish I have never done this. What was your reaction to getting 15, 20? Like it was a class of niner. Mm. And it looked like very professional, actually. Oh, did? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought I was being a complete clown that day. <laughs> nah. Because I was making jokes about Alicia, I was making jokes about uh, the receptionist, the printer guy, right? Yeah. I actually introduced myself as a student, not as a teacher, remember? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, you had Alicia's photo there, teacher, and then my photo next to it, and my name, my label, my title, student. Right. Well, it was basically ordinary IELTS group, uh -huh. but on steroids. That, that is not no. possible. Okay, people know you're lying. <laughs> so basically, I spent three months. I mean, if, if you're talking about like AM, mm -hmm. an intensive IELTS course, I spent three months on that. Mm -hmm. And like two, two months out of these three months, mm -hmm. I believe I wasted my writing. Mm -hmm. I mean, my writing wasn't improving just because I was just writing, right? I look at what I'm doing and I just can see all the possibilities. I mean, if I just stop writing essays, um, how it's going to reflect on my on my IELTS score? How, how it's going to reflect on my discipline? I really wonder why you decided to go down the path of becoming an aerospace engineer, aerospace engineer, yeah, exactly. right? Someone who builds rockets, yeah. right? Yeah. He's talking about like the NASA rockets, like yes. SpaceX rockets. Yeah. Why, why is that? Why do you want to become an engineer? Well, I'm not like really into anime. I have my, I, I have some of my friends who watched about a hundred animes. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of, let's say amateur guy. Yeah. <laughs> but my favorite anime would be the Demon Slayer. This is the real life. Yeah. This is all fantasy. Yeah. Open your eyes and see. <laughs> Mama <laughs> just killed a man. Put a gun against his head. Pull That's... the trigger, now he's dead. All right. We're live. We're recording now. Mm -hmm. Hey folks, hey everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Adustra Muse. We're finally back after a long break. You guys can't believe what happened. We had to put our podcast on hold because we decided to do a complete makeover. We decided to give the podcast a complete makeover and it took us almost a month and that probably explains, that should explain why we were not putting out as many podcasts as we used to do. And we're back with hopefully better audio quality and better video, and you can probably already tell. All right, so I, I'm done explaining why we were not so active lately. Now, finally, well, let me introduce to you our guest. Our guest on the podcast today is an amazing student and a bright guy who went on to get overall 8.5 on the IELTS test at the age of 15. And not only that, that, that guy, this guy pulled off impressive 15, 20 on the SAT test. And I, I just feel like an idiot <laughs> sitting next to him. I, I think when I was 15, I could barely speak English, but this guy already 
sounds very much like a native. So if you guys want to meet this guy, please keep watching this podcast. All right. Uh, finally, time to meet Mr. Amirbek Bakshulayev. Mr. Amirbek, welcome on the podcast. Welcome hey. to the podcast. Hey, thank you for inviting. Yeah. Well, we're finally doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you say we give our audience a little backstory about uh, this podcast? This podcast is actually part of a deal we made at the start yeah. of the program, if you remember. Yeah, when we had the first class, you said that whoever gets 8.5 is going to have the podcast. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, at first I was a bit doubtful because, uh -huh. I mean, podcast. But then when you invited me to this podcast, I was in awe. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. But I made a promise, yeah. and I want to keep that promise. And that I, ha I made this promise to all other students I teach. Any, any student who comes to Ed Astra and gets overall 8.5 on their test, they, they get invited on the podcast. They get invited to the podcast. They get to be on the podcast. So they can share their own experience of learning English with, you know, their friends, other people out there who are doing the same test. Yeah, and see if other people can relate. Anyway, would you like to tell our audience a little about yourself? So, yeah, uh, my name is Amirbek Bakhshulayev, mm -hmm. and I am 15 years old. So currently I started in 10th grade. Mm -hmm. um, technically, it's a junior year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... I've been always fascinated by English language by itself. I like the language itself. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to live somewhere where, where I could speak in English. Mm -hmm. And I found that place. It's the USA. Mm -hmm. So the only not, way... Not at Astra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those places. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, but it's only like temporary. Yeah. So I found that only through US colleges, you can live in the USA. And... So I started like preparing for IELTS, SAT, mm -hmm. APs, and a bunch of other stuff mm -hmm. to get into college, uh, the, the dream school that I want to go to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I basically found out about the U.S. colleges when I was just 13, I believe, or 12. And I basically started with IELTS. I mean, just like everybody starts, right? It's IELTS. So... I started with IELTS, then I moved to SAT, mm -hmm. then I retook my IELTS, mm -hmm. right, to m make it, like, better, right? Mm -hmm. And now I'm doing, like, APs and preparing for college, yeah. Right, right. Well, uh, you just gave us a complete outline of the yeah. things you've been doing lately. Now, what do you say we take some time to break those things down? Like, starting, uh, let's, let's... Let's start off with your, you know, introduction introduction to learning English. So at what age did you start learning English? In, um, so how did you get into learning English? Like, who, who, did you have any inspiration or was it family pressure or was it peer pressure? Well, basically, English as a subject is a mandatory part of school curriculum. Mm -hmm. So all I remember myself, I've been always learning English, like grammar, uh, tenses and etc. But only after I found out about the U.S. colleges, I started doing it in an advanced manner. Mm -hmm. So I found out about IELTS and I started doing like advanced passages. And basically, as I told you before, when I was 13, it's seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I heard that the first thing that you need is IELTS and IELTS is basically about English. So technically speaking, uh, it's, it was when I was 13 when I started my English, like mm -hmm. professionally, I mean, in an mm -hmm. advanced manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before that, it, it was just child's play, just mm -hmm. grammar. Yeah. So you mean like you weren't that serious about learning yeah. English until you realized you need it for your yeah. uh, future studies? Yeah. But I thought that it's just another subject and I shouldn't pay too much attention. Mm -hmm. But then when I found out that it's a compulsory part, mm -hmm. getting into colleges, uh -huh. I had nothing to do but to yeah. start doing IELTS. Yeah. Right, right. And where did that journey lead you? Where did you go after that? So you can like, kind of talk about like your you know, first teacher who introduced you to IELTS and where you went from that teacher. I'm, I'm guessing you've had multiple teachers in the past, right? Yeah, of course. Just like everybody else, mm -hmm. I've been experimenting on like courses. Uh -huh. Yeah, I signed up. Experimenting. <laughs> so I signed up for many courses. Uh -huh. uh, I didn't know which one was the best. So I was just uh, going from, my, from one course to another, uh -huh. right? But then I heard about Millennium. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I signed up for their courses. I spent about a year mm -hmm. like doing IELTS. 
So first half of my journey was basically introduction to IELTS, um, learning tenses, learning basic stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But then uh, IELTS became really serious. Mm -hmm. uh, I found about writing, speaking, mm -hmm. reading, and advanced passages. Basically, um, so basically it was really advanced. I mean, second half of my journey was really advanced. Mm -hmm. I was doing um, quite difficult passages, right? And in, I, in yeah. what sense difficult? You mean like in terms of the vocabulary, the language complexity? Um, everything combined. Yeah, everything, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, need, I, I needed to have mm -hmm. that different sort of comprehension. Yeah, I, I, I needed to make my vocabulary richer. Uh -huh. yeah? And at what point did you realize that? Ha you said halfway? Yeah, I'm halfway, sorry. yeah. It was the so basically, after like six months of preparation, after uh -huh. doing like beginner books, like mm -hmm. elementary, intermediate, I, I had my, my first mock test mm -hmm. and I got 1818. Uh, 1818. Yeah. That that's equivalent to five? five probably five. five yeah, probably yeah. five. I got basically demotivated because I thought that my level was much higher. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, from that moment on, I basically increased my, um, my, my workload. I started doing more, more passages. I read many more books. Mm -hmm. I started to basically speak in English mm -hmm. like completely. Um, so I would say that from that moment on, basically my mentality changed. I mean, I was doing everything in English, yeah. So after getting after like failing the mock test, I I just I just said to myself that um, I'm either doing everything in English mm -hmm. or getting nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And what happened after that? Well, after, after that, I basically got into the practice group. Mm -hmm. Right. I was studying like from from like nine in the morning till like. 10 at night. Mm -hmm. oh, don't <laughs> yeah, you think yeah, that, quite a lot, quite a lot. Little, that's a little too much, that's a little too much. <laughs> well, yeah, it's including the breaks mm -hmm. and etc. So in spite of all of that, mm -hmm. my first attempt, I would consider my first attempt to be a failure mm -hmm. because I got 7.5. Are you kidding me right now? 7.5 is a great score. They'll, well, get a, they'll get you into a lot of universities. I mean, I was quite expecting eight, mm -hmm. um, but I got bigger than 7.5. Mm -hmm. So it was like a failure. It was like a second push mm -hmm. to go like further, to do more. Mm -hmm. And in, I believe that in my SAT journey, I did much more. Mm -hmm. I basically pushed myself to my boundaries. I started, I, I started like all, all day long. So you mean like years. after you got 7.5, yeah. you decided to take a break from IELTS and try SAT for some time, right? Um, no, not, not, not exactly. My plans were to do IELTS first, mm -hmm. to have a strong foundation of my like, English, mm -hmm. and then start something, something that is much harder, mm -hmm. SAT. Um, so after SAT, I wanted to retake IELTS because... But, uh, okay, yeah, there, yeah. there's a little gap here. So yeah. what, so... No, no, after, I, I started after SAT. After getting 7.5, you, you took up SAT? Yeah, just Got right it. away. Right away. Got it. So you signed up for some SAT yeah, courses, yeah. Or courses, right? Yeah. I see. So I basically wanted to do like SAT self study because mm -hmm. I heard that many people got 1500s mm -hmm. uh, with self studying, but knowing myself that mm -hmm. I couldn't basically build up that discipline mm -hmm. and force myself to study uh, like both math and English, mm -hmm. I started to, I, I, I basically wanted to sign up for the courses. So I found one. So Adastra courses, mm -hmm. SAT courses. And I was expecting to do SAT for quite a long time, for probably a year. But in just five months, I took my test and got 1520. 1520 in your yeah. first attempt SAT? No, actually, it's my second attempt. What was your second? What did you get on in your so first So my first attempt was 1430. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... Uh, that, th that's still impressive if you think about it. Because 1430 is the equivalent, IELTS equivalent of eight. Um, right. I, well, I'm not sure about it, and that. And 1500 is IELTS equivalent of 8.5. Might be, yeah. yeah. So actually, there is sort of unpleasant story happened when I took my first SAT test. Mm -hmm. So just two days before the SAT test, I broke my hand. So basically, yeah. Oh, I remember you walking around with a yeah. cast on your hand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I always wonder what happened to your, to, to, to your arm. Uh, well, basically, I was doing some punches, and uh -huh. I accidentally punched the wall. Uh -huh. Basically, some you mean accidents. like you mean pun punching 
why would you be punching the wall? You were, <laughs> was it just a game? You like shadow punching? Yeah, exactly, exactly. You were mad at someone. <laughs> well, you, probably. You wanted to take that anger on, on that wall. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so I basically did, it, did not kind of calculate the powers, uh-huh. and I punched the wall with all my power. And basically my hand... Guys, don't try it at home, please. Never do that. <laughs> never do that. Yeah. Yes, never do that. So basically my hand broke, and I was not able to write. Mm-hmm. And, and that it, was your right arm, right? No, your it was left, like, yeah, excuse me? It was your right arm, right? Right arm or left arm? Uh, no, it was my right arm, wow. yeah, main arm. So basically in two days, I had my SAT test uh-huh. and I was like r- really demotivated. Mm-hmm. I mean, imagine you have a, like one of the biggest exams in your life and mm-hmm. your hand is broken, mm-hmm. like the main hand. <laughs> so and you're setting paper-based SAT. No, it, it wasn't actual paper-based. Oh, really? It was digital SAT. Digital oh, well, SAT. Then that yeah. shouldn't be a problem, I guess. Well, in English, yes. In English, you don't necessarily use your hands a lot, but in math, mm-hmm. when you need to calculate something, well, it was sort of a problem. It was pain in my neck. Uh-huh. I, I, I basically finished math much later than other guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. Probably because of that, I screw up the first attempt. I got just 1430. Mm-hmm. But for the second attempt, I was much more careful. I stopped punching the walls. <laughs> and I basically got 1520 my second attempt. Yeah. I, I had the confidence. Yeah. I had extra months of preparation. Mm-hmm. And uh, for these reasons, I got, I got 1500, I believe. Yes. Right. Yeah. So as someone who's pulled off an impressive score on the SAT, uh, what are some you know, tips and suggestions you have for those students who are prepping for their SAT exam? Okay, sure. So basically SAT. SAT consists of two parts, math and the reading part. Mm -hmm. So for the math, I would just advise doing a lot of practice because math is about practicing. You basically gain the theory part, you learn about Mm -hmm. formulas, and only then you start doing practice. I believe that everybody in just two or three months can ace the mass, can ace the SAT mass, like easily at 800. It just requires sort of, um, a person just should believe in himself mm-hmm. and do whatever, whatever it's necessary to get that mm-hmm. like 800. So. And what would you get on your math? I got 790. 790, but not 800. No, not, anyway, not, not 800. Anyway, you came pretty close, right? Yeah. Pretty close. Next time, I want to get 800, like oh, sure, 800. You, you want to redo SAT? I mean, of course. I want to get 1,600. Ah. You guys heard that? This guy is after 1,600. That, you, that would make you the first guy with 1,600 in yeah. Uzbekistan, right? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So for the reading part, reading part is generally the hardest part. Mm-hmm. It's much, much harder than, SA, than, than IELTS passages. Mm-hmm. If you just get the level of IELTS passages, like from one to three, the SAT reading passages will be passage five. They're that hard. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're basically on different topics. They're on social science, just science, history, politics, everything. For that reason, people should be sort of well-rounded. They should look mm-hmm. for everything. They should read articles on different topics. Uh-huh. Let's say read about civil war, read about scientists who discovered a particle, for example, and etc. That is actually the case with IELTS as well, right? On IELTS, you, you, you get passages on so many different topics. Yeah, yeah. But in SAT, you have, tw- you have basically 54 questions, different questions in, in reading part. Uh-huh. And you have 54 different topics. Wow. Well, probably just figure might be the same, like uh-huh. science, science. But the, let's say, content might be very different, mm-hmm. right? For example, in one passage, it might be talking about... Um, let's say a particle accelerator. And in the second part, it might be talking about um, electrons or protons, right? Like different top, like it's the same field, but different content. And some people might find it really confusing, right? So for that reason, I would advise just going for everything. For social science, history, just science, politics, right? So you need to get curious and start reading exactly. about all different things. Exactly, exactly. Okay. That, that, that's actually what I did. Mm-hmm. I, I, I basically took up the uh, article marathon. Mm-hmm. So, I, so, so in the period of one month, every single day, I did one article. I mean, I read the article, I did, I, I, I did the short note, and I analyzed that article. And in just 30 days, I jumped from 69, like 690 uh, to 730. 
I, I believe that um, in the period of more than a month, a person can achieve even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably like 770, 790 I easily. Really, yeah, I really hope SAT guys are right now taking notes. Yeah. This guy just dropped a golden nugget here, guys. So he went from six, six, oh, 690. In, in 690 to 730 yeah, exactly. in 30 days, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, which is a big jump if you think about it. Yeah. So, so, and you did that by reading article a day and writing a summary on that. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, so one more thing that I would advise um, is to improve the vocabulary. Many people think that vocabulary is just another part and you, you don't need it, mm-hmm. but vocabulary plays a very important role. Mm-hmm. Vocabulary, vocabulary is really important. Mm-hmm. The richer your vocab, the higher score you're going to get mm-hmm. on, the, on the SAT test. Because many people find, like I've asked many SAT takers, all of them said that vocabulary was the main problem. Mm-hmm. Yes. And in my first attempt, I can certainly say that. Mm-hmm. I probably made a lot of mistakes because of the uh, because of the vocabulary, be- yeah. because of the vocab, I, I just didn't get the word. Right. It was really advanced. Yeah. And so words that don't normally appear in IELTS test. No, Would you they're say much that? different. They're scientific. Oh, all right, try me. Ask me some vocabulary, SAT vocabulary <laughs> questions and see if I can. Uh, yeah, let's do it. But, well, it was just a line. I'm up for a challenge. I'm um, up for a challenge. Let's do it. Like humpback. Humpback. Humpback, yes. Humpback. I think it's the part of a camel. Yeah. Humpback. <laughs> Hump. Well, it was just a long time ago. I, I can't like literally remember that, those words, but they were like really scientific. Basically, uh, humpback. It, no, seriously. Uh, hang on a minute. Humpback, right? Humpback. Yeah. Humpback. Humpback. A H U M P B A C K. Yeah. I think it's the back back of a camel, and they have yeah. two humps. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I I also think that. I can look it up real quick yeah. right now. I got. <laughs> So basically, the words in SAT uh, test are oh. yeah are like no. Lo- it, says, yeah. it says it's a whale. It's a whale. You see? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's an animal. It's a sea creature. It's a whale, yeah. biggest creature in the world. So basically, SAT words are like this. You learn them, and after mm-hmm. two weeks, you forget about them. Mm-hmm. They're they're so different. I mean, so I mean, like uh, yeah. I guess the term they use for it is less common. Yeah, they're like much less common. Or, in, or yeah. passive, passive yeah. words. Like we don't normally use them in our yeah. speech. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. You'll never ever hear any American or British guy saying like SAT words. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in uh, my, Unless they're a scientist or a professor. Yeah, probably like, yeah, they, they must be scientists. Yeah. yeah. So look, in my first attempt, I, I got a big deal. I'm, mm-hmm. I, I mean, the vocabulary was a big problem for me. And I messed up like reading part because of the vocab. Mm-hmm. So what I did is just pick up, pick up like vocabulary book with 300 words and memorize all of them in less than two weeks. Mm-hmm. That's also what happened to me. That also what like helped me to improve my 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 reading score, mm-hmm. like in in SAT, because vocabulary plays a really important role. And every day, SAT learner should learn at least like 10 to 20 words at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. I don't want to like exaggerate, but over my but over, over the course of my SAT journey, I believe I learned more than like 500 words, probably like new new and very scientific words, mm-hmm. and I forgot probably like 90% of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I don't quite use them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that frequently. All right, All right. Yeah, I'm just switching windows. I gotta look at my questions here. Now, what are some things you would have done differently as part of your SAT preparation? Well, I'm not sure about that. Mm-hmm. Do you ever sometimes like sit and uh, look back and reflect on the time yeah, you I had do. here? I do. What, what are the things you would have done differently if you could do it all over? Well, I do have some regrets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the biggest regret that I have right now is that I cared too much about other people. Mm-hmm. Basically, I was the I, I was always the youngest like student among my peers, like in in a like among my group mates, mm-hmm. right? And they were always like criticizing me, mm-hmm. like telling something that I basically criticizing me, telling my weak points, right? Mm-hmm. And I really cared about those words. I mean, I was like like doing whatever they expected me to do. But in reality, I, sh- I shouldn't have done this, never. I should just follow 
fo follow the instructions, follow, follow the flow, and do everything that I needed to do, not just listen to others. So what, what do I mean by listen to others? I was influenced by the peer pressure. Basically, I picked up some bad habits, like I went to the game clubs or um, didn't, do didn't do the homework or skipped some classes. And I wish I have never done this. Yeah, and I wish like everybody cares only about themselves, not about others or others' opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do differently, both in IELTS mm -hmm. and SAT. If it makes you feel any better, it's completely normal that this thing happened to you. It, it, hap it happens to all of us, yeah. right? Like at, at, a, at an early stage of your life, when you're a teenager, you have a lot of insecurities and you try to conform yeah. to your social circle because you don't want to feel left out because then you don't feel like you don't want to feel like an outcast it's only later on that you realize that you don't really have to you know f follow or let other people's judgment decide what to do or not to do with your time in your life yeah yeah, yeah. and at least you realize it, realize that at this age yeah, of course. For some people, it takes a lifetime to realize it, to come to this realization. Yeah. So, So yeah, yeah I, I wish I've never listened to them. Mm -hmm. I wish I just did whatever I wanted to do. Sometimes I change the course of action, the mm -hmm. things that I that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I One day, I wanted to become a politician, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but someone told me that, well, y y you are bad at politics. Don't do that. Never do that. You can never be that guy. Uh -huh. And I changed my plans. And I wish I've never done this. Mm -hmm. oh. I mean, probably not in this case. This case was probably like more or less positive. Uh -huh. But in other cases, people should follow their dreams. Mm -hmm. People should never like listen to others. You can, you can still become a politician. You, I mean, you're not too old for that. Yeah, but now I don't want to. I've, yeah. I've been basically following a different path. Mm -hmm. A path of an engineer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah. Now, yeah. going back to your SAT prep. Right. What was your reaction to getting fifteen twenty? How did it feel like getting fifteen twenty? Basically, I was expecting similar score. I was expecting fifteen hundred mm -hmm. because just when I left the presidential school, so it's the venue where 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 you take the SAT. Where the moment I left the pre presidential school, I knew that I got fifteen hundred because. I have sort of a feeling that my math was well around perfect, my English was high, and etc. And I was a bit shocked that I got like uh, that low in English. Actually, mm -hmm. I wanted to get like even higher, mm -hmm. like like in English. But overall, I, I was really happy that I got fifteen, fifteen, twenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that puts you in top ninety, ninety uh, eight point five, I believe, percentile. Yeah, right. But it's oh, only. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does being in so it means, 98th percentile mean? It means that you are better mm -hmm. or the same as 98% of uh, SAT takers. Better than. Yeah, better than. 90. Or the same as. Uh -huh. Yeah, something like that. Right. So if you, if you basically have 1600, mm -hmm. uh, your percentile is less than 99%, meaning that less than 99% of people mm -hmm. um, got, got that score. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, basically, 1520. So, so it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's like you are in top 2%. Yeah, Can but, you say but that? it depends on country. In our country, SAT isn't that popular, mm -hmm. so not many people get high score. Mm -hmm. It's so percentile is ninety ninth percentile, but overall, yeah, like in a in in the world, it's ninety eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For that reason, I want to retake SAT. University wants to see me excel. Wants to see me like mm -hmm. being special, and ninety nine plus percentile is, I believe. Uh, something that would show them that I'm sort of special guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right. So you're doing it for a clear reason, yeah. unlike those students who are obsessed with the test itself. <laughs> so it's not an obsession. It's you got a solid, valid point. Yeah, your aim, your after. Yes. you want to get sixteen hundred. Yeah, because you think it's gonna make your application look better and stand exactly. out. Exactly. Right. F 1520. Well, 1520 is, is so popular these days. I mean, I see like many people getting 1500s, mm -hmm. 1550s. And if they compare like two students, mm -hmm. right, and their applications are identical, mm -hmm. but one has 
like a higher SAT score, mm -hmm. like 20 points, 30 points, who do you think they're going to choose? Of course, that guy who, who has a higher SAT. But not necessarily. They also take into account other things like yeah. their essay, yeah, recommendation but, letters. But given that they're identical, yeah. I mean, just imagine hypothetical situation, they're identical. They're going to choose one who has higher SAT score. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 16, well, no one can be 1600 because it's the mm -hmm. uh, max. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you, you do have a point here, though. Assuming all their variables are the same, yeah. uh, if I was the admission officer, I'd probably also pick the applicant with the higher uh, standardized test score. Yeah. Cool. Uh, can we talk a little about your IELTS prep as well? Right. Sure. Uh, I feel like you spend m more of your time prepping for IELTS than you did for SAT, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm, so I'm guessing you have a lot more stories to share about yeah. IELTS than you do with, exactly. uh, about the other test. Now, uh, I want to specifically focus on the uh, on your you know stay here as an IELTS student, not as an SAT mm -hmm. student. You actually completed both programs here, yeah. right? So uh, let's talk a little about the A and M program. Yeah. So uh, that's short for uh, Ali Sharon Muhammad Ali program. You signed up for it with, signed up for it with seven point five, right? Yeah, I, did. I was honestly in two minds about letting you in because i was thinking to myself well this guy got sat i mean he looks like a smart guy he's got 7.5 and he wants to go abroad why does he and he his and english his english is good not it's above good it's above average right and i was thinking to myself probably this guy's just gonna waste his time here coming and end up with a 7.5 again or possibly eight but still not a big difference right 7.5 or 8, just a half a score difference. It's not really worth doing our program unless you're making a, a one-point jump, mm -hmm. right? So what was your first impression coming uh, to this program? <laughs> so it was the first time when I met you. Uh -huh. Probably not the first time, but when I was in your class. Mm -hmm. Like, it was a class of niner. Mm -hmm. And it looked like very professional, actually. Oh, it did? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought I was being a complete clown that day because <laughs> nah. I was making jokes about Alicia, I was making jokes about uh, the receptionist, the <laughs> printer guy, right? Yeah. I actually introduced myself as a student, not as a teacher, remember? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, you had Alicia's photo there, teacher, and then my photo next to it, and my name, my label, my title, student. Yeah. Right. Well, pr it was basically ordinary IELTS group, uh -huh. but on steroids. <laughs> I basically consider you as a native mm -hmm. because your English was really good. Mm -hmm. And for me, basically all these classes that I took, like with you, with, with AM, they were basically like IELTS classes, ordinary IELTS classes, but again on steroids. They were like really good mm -hmm. because again, everything is qualified. Um, there, are, um, there are guys who got 8.5, there are guys who got 8. Mm -hmm. And I was really sure that I'm going to get at least 8. Mm -hmm. I was really sure that I'm going to get at least 8, but my aim was 8.5. Mm -hmm. But at the beginning, I wasn't really sure about 8.5 because I saw that 8.5 is, is like for, for like geniuses. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't quite sure that I'm going to get mm -hmm. um, like subscores necessary for 8.5. Mm -hmm. so that for, for that reason, f like first a week or, or two, I was aiming for 8. Mm -hmm. But then you sort of gave me motivational speech <laughs> <laughs> and I like shift my mind. Uh -huh. I was like, well, 8.5. Uh -huh. well, if, if I, if I got like 15, 20, I can certainly do eight, mm -hmm. but if I'm going to get eight, it means that I can also get 8.5. Mm -hmm. So I said no less than 8.5. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. And, uh, yeah. the program, how would you how would you describe the program in general? Would you say like on a scale zero to ten, how tough would you say it is? Um, well, I would say it's about nine point five. Mm -hmm. Not not that tough, mm -hmm. but quite tough. Yeah. Like at the beginning, it was quite tough because I I, I had to kind of change my schedule. Mm -hmm. Basically, the program was tailored to 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 like students to spend um, basically at least like eight hours on on IELTS. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And you spent eight hours a day prepping. Well, I believe so. Uh -huh. So my typical day was like this. I, I woke up at six. I came here at, at eight. Mm -hmm. I, I had a class. 
I, I was preparing for the class and had the class till one o'clock. Mm -hmm. Then I went for some break. I mm -hmm. took some break. I, I had a lunch and then came back at, at four or five to do extra homework, basically to write extra essay, mm -hmm. right? Or do extra uh, like reading passage, right? Mm -hmm. And it probably took about, about eight hours, probably eight hours, mm -hmm. might be less, right? So it was really tough for me. Well, at the beginning, I did not expect it to start to 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 be that that tough mm -hmm. because our literature teacher gave us like tons of homework. Mm -hmm. I, I was a bit afraid that mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna screw up and you're gonna like drop me out. Mm -hmm. But ev everything was okay. Yeah. yeah, everything went smoothly. Right, right. And um, what social side of things like when you were part of this program did you make friends along the way oh yeah i made uh, incredible friends uh -huh. i'm particularly talking about ps students uh -huh. yeah so in the middle of the program well as we remember in in at the end of june i believe uh -huh. uh, so ps guys came like asking for her, her place here and he means presidential school I yeah guess. presidential school yeah ps is presidential school yeah so those stu students were really good they're they, they Basically, I was surrounded by different perspectives. Some of them were Russian, some of them uh, wanted to become computer scientists, some of them wanted to become um, biologists, mm -hmm. um, basically different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And I made a lot of friends, and I basically increased my network. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends right now. Mm -hmm. And not only presidential school students, but also guys um, like from universities. I know that this AM program isn't necessarily it is necessarily for university guys, right? Just to just to get that eight point five or or eight. Mm -hmm. And I found those guys, like like Mr. Abbas, for example. Mm -hmm. um, they were quite dedicated, mm -hmm. and we were motivating each other. Like mm -hmm. when 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 I basically had a bad day, he was a friend. He was a shoulder to cry on, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I made a lot of friends. I mean, Mr. Abbas's transformation is just nothing yeah. short of a miracle. <laughs> I wish you knew the conversation I had with him when he showed up for yeah. admission and interview. <laughs> that guy. Yes. He was. He, he was so down that he had. He did not believe him, and yeah. he had. He did not believe himself. He. He was completely uh, beat down mentally, sort yeah. of. Yes. For some reason, right? And he was he was not actually sure about signing up for the program. He's like, I'm not sure I can do that, honestly, right? And then he went from that mindset to eight to eight, and not just that, like his personality changed to 180. Exactly. Right? Yeah. He became more talkative, right? He started you know, blending in with you guys. You guys started doing things together. Yeah. Right, just really opened them up, this experience you guys had together. Yes. Right. Basically, when I first met that guy, I thought that, well, he's just going to he's just gonna be one of those quiet guys. Or know. drop out. Yeah, yeah, and drop out. Or, or at the end get like, uh -huh. probably six. <laughs> I was not expecting eight from, from him. Uh -huh. But I'm really happy for that guy. Yeah, yeah he, so am I. Yeah, he basically uh, put all of himself. Mm -hmm. he, he was dedicated. He did... Uh, like reading passages, a lot of listening practice tests. Mm -hmm. He wrote a lot of essays, analyzed them. Yeah, mm -hmm. at the beginning, his routine was quite different. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say like something for, for band eight, mm -hmm. but then he started to spend much more time on, on, on IELTS. He, he started to believe in himself. Yeah, and I believe that that's the reason why he got eight. He mm -hmm. started to believe in, 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 in himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, it, it was a wild journey. It was a wild journey. <laughs> yeah. Right? Every time we have admissions, students come in. Uh, in this like short time we spend together, a lot happens. There's so so many stories and so many experiences and memories compressed in that short amount of time. Yes. Right. And so, do you? Uh, what are your personal favorites about the program? Um. Well, this program is special in terms of the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by the atmosphere? In, whenever you're inside the class, mm -hmm. you know that everybody speaks in English. Mm -hmm. You're basically in complete English atmosphere. Mm -hmm. There is no place in Bukhara, well, as far as I'm concerned, uh -huh. where you can just sit and speak in English with your friends, have a mm -hmm. class completely in English, mm -hmm. have your thoughts in English, sometimes mm -hmm. even dreams. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
this program makes you like English speaking yeah. guy in, right. in just three months. Yeah, we spend just three months. Yeah, you, the moment you walk inside the classroom, your mind settings instantly switch to English, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, and not just, right. when I just think about the Dastra, my mindset changes to, to, to English. Uh -huh. When I just think about the Dastra, it's just mm -hmm. English, completely English. And I, I, I believe that this what like makes it successful, right? Mm -hmm. for, for that reason, there are a lot of successful mm -hmm. alumni, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The environment. That, that, that's what I like about, right. about, about this program. Right. Sure, sure, sure. I'm, thanks, I guess. <laughs> how, about, how about pet peeves? You got any pet peeves about the program? Any shortcomings or any problems? But you need to be completely honest here. Okay, sure. Right. So, well, everything was great. Honestly, honestly. Uh -huh. Well, that, for, that is for, not no. possible. Okay, people know you're lying. <laughs> okay, that. look, for, at the beginning, it, it seemed like what we, what we were doing was just futile. Uh -huh. It didn't make sense, actually. Pointless, right? Yeah, Jesus. pointless. We were just doing reading passages, uh -huh. like class, master mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I was like, well, I did this like a year ago, mm -hmm. and I'm still like making it. Like I'm, I'm acing these passages, mm -hmm. but after a moment, you realize that, well, I, I've been actually changing. Mm -hmm. I am changing in a way that I do not know, notice the change. Mm -hmm. If I compare myself, for example, myself in like in the moment I took my IELTS mm -hmm. and the moment I just came, there's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Probably that guy, like um, that June guy, wouldn't probably get even 7.5, mm -hmm. but. In, the, in in these three months, I did whatever you said. Yeah, I, I just did whatever you said, and everything went fine. Everything mm -hmm. was smooth. Mm -hmm. I, again, had some doubts, uh -huh. because we, we just spent two hours. Mm -hmm. You gave us some assignments. Mm -hmm. I did not necessarily believe in the success of the program at the beginning, mm -hmm. initially, but then my mind changed. Mm -hmm. Everything like made sense. We were doing mm -hmm. passages. You were assigning, assigning us to do recordings, video recordings. And only after doing like 10 video, video recordings, I realized the benefits of, of doing the video recordings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it makes you feel confident, right? Mm -hmm. And you basically look at yourself, look at your face, how do you look, right? Mm -hmm. So it makes you more self-aware and start exactly. paying attention to yeah. mistakes and try avoiding them, yeah, right? Exactly, but, but I had like one problem mm -hmm. that everybody would agree on. Let me guess. Yeah. Uh, it's punctuality. Exactly. 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 Oh. <laughs> Our classes sometimes yeah. started two hours late. Two hours. And please tell the audience that it was not my class. <laughs> or was it? Oh, my God. Please tell me it was, my, it was not my class. Well, well, of course, it wasn't your class. Yeah. Your class. <laughs> not, not two hours. Yeah. Probably like an hour at most. Uh -huh. um, probably only the punctuality. Only the punctuality. Yeah. Sometimes it started like too late. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Our class was supposed to start at 10, uh -huh. started at 1. You're talking about Alicia, for sure. <laughs> okay, not me. Trust me, guys. I, don't, I do not run the, that late. Okay. But, and, and, and I think this podcast explains why I always run late. Look at, look at the clock right now. It's almost 10 o'clock, and I'm sitting here shooting a podcast, and I got a class tomorrow morning. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you mentioned that you were changing. Uh -huh. but, yeah. <laughs> I always say that. I always promise I'm going to try yeah. being punctual next time. Yeah. But uh, I think it's going to be a cold day in hell before that happens. Yeah. But by the end of the program, classes started mm -hmm. quite on time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you weren't late, I believe. Mm -hmm. But apart from punctuality, I have basically nothing to say, mm -hmm. actually. I mean, I got what I needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got 8.5 and that, that's what I need. That's all. Yeah, that's what ultimately matters, like the results. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you have some bad days, you have some good days, but as long as the net result is positive yeah. or the net result is what you want, yeah. yeah, everything else is just an afterthought. Yeah. It's not that important, right? What are some things you would have done differently in your IELTS preparation? Um, if you could go back and do things all over again. Well... So one of the things you realize that they weren't that effective, that weren't that efficient, say, in terms of oh, yeah. how much time you spent doing them. Yeah. So basically, I spent three months. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if you're talking about like AM, mm -hmm. like intensive IELTS course, I spent three months on that. Mm -hmm. And like two, two months out of these three months, mm -hmm. 
I believe I wasted my writing. Mm-hmm. I mean, my writing wasn't improving. Just because I was just writing, right? Mm. Just, just writing essays, not an- analyzing them, checking with GPT or analyzing other essays. But at the end, I got like very wise advice. Mm-hmm. Just analyze, don't write, analyze. I analyzed probably about like 20, 30 essays of not only yours, mm-hmm. but also Simon essays. Yeah, it's like a very popular. And what is your approach to analyzing an essay like? Can you be a little more specific? Because sure. so, I think there are some students taking notes. So what do I mean by analysis? Mm-hmm. You go look at the look, look at the essay, mm-hmm. and the first thing that you do is go over the ideas. Mm-hmm. So basically, what this guy, what this writer, trying to say, mm-hmm. like the ideas. Uh, for example, it might be about crime, right? Mm-hmm. And you basically expand your um, ideas in terms of in terms of crime, mm-hmm. and after like doing so, idea, yeah. what kind of ideas you learned yeah. about crime? What are those? What can you give some yeah. more yeah. specific sure. examples? So, for example, that um, not every single criminal should be punished. Mm-hmm. Like not every single criminal should be kept at prison. And they might be given a community work mm-hmm. or just issued a fine. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically. In my real exam, I got essay about crime, mm-hmm. and I analyzed a lot of essays about crime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's that, that's the like I want. And you got eight in your writing, right? Yeah. For those who don't know, he is our first student ever in our entire history of teaching who got eight in writing. Yeah, yeah. So, I basically asked many, many people who got eight in writing mm-hmm. or like close to eight about what makes their essay special. Mm-hmm. And if you just compare that band 8 essay and that band 6.5 essay, there is a huge difference. I mean, band, band 8 essay like goes deep into the topic. Mm-hmm. It talks on every single aspect of that question. Mm-hmm. Let's say it's about criminals, right? So the band 8 essay is going to talk about not just criminals, but basically what they do after, after they... Um, after they're released mm-hmm. uh, the prison, right? Right. Yeah, so there's a huge difference between Band-Aid. Right. Like if, if, if the topic says, what are some alternatives to yeah. prison time? Yeah. They don't just say they should do community work. They also explain how that community work yeah. turns their life around and what ways exactly that community work makes a difference yes. or serves a better you know, punishment yeah. than sending them to, to, yeah. to jail. As opposed to just saying them, get them to do yeah, that's some all. community work, right? Yeah. Right, that and, and basically that's called effective argumentation. Mm-hmm. I, I remember you like teaching about that, mm-hmm. effective argumentation. Mm-hmm. Make a reader convinced. M- make, make, make reader convinced. Mm-hmm. And band 8 essays usually convince me. Mm-hmm. While band 6.5, n- not, not really. They're, uh-huh. they're just for the sake of being yeah. essays. Yeah. But band 8, ba- band 8 essays are mm-hmm. um, very analytical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and they are rich in details, mm-hmm. right? They they basically mention some details, like mm-hmm. very tiny details, mm-hmm. um, and that would set like mm-hmm. band eight writing essays uh, apart from like six point five. And to be able to write essays like that, you also need to know about the topic a great deal. Yeah, right. To be able to go that deep into the topic, write in great detail. In IELTS writing, actually, you don't have to talk much detail because mm-hmm. you got only 60, 40 minutes. 40 minutes for task. To write task two. And, and there's, there's only so much you can write. Yes. Right? It's not like a dissertation you're writing. So you can't write in great detail, but you need to be able to talk about it yeah. and to a certain extent that makes the reader think or assume that you are well-educated. Yeah. You know what you're talking about. Yes. Right? And, and, and you're not going to be able to make that impression unless you are well-read on the topic. You've read about it. Uh, essays, articles, passages, or watched podcasts, documentaries, or whatever, right? Yeah, and here, mm-hmm. SAT really helped me, really assisted. Mm-hmm. As I told you before at the beginning of the podcast, SAT is on different subjects. Mm-hmm. It can be about science, again. And... After doing like 100, 200, 300 practice tests, I mean problems, right? You basically become so well-rounded that you can talk on any topic. You can talk about politics. You can talk about like, let's say physics or, or, or like biology, right? Mm-hmm. On different topics. 
um, that's how like SAT also helped me to, to improve my writing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I had a richer vocabulary, my grammar was much better, and I had m many more ideas like to talk to, um, like when I was writing my essays, mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Yeah, SAT greatly helps like yeah. to, to improve your, not just writing, but reading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you got to improve your comprehension mm -hmm. and and reaching your vocabulary, mm -hmm. right? You're going to have a broader grammar. Mm -hmm. You're going to have, you're going to use m many more grammatical structures, mm -hmm. right? Like if tenses, um, you're going to use different prepositions and you're going to have different structure of your essay. Mm -hmm. For example, before starting SAT, I had just four, four body like essays and it, they were quite typical, right? But then after like SAT, I sort of changed it, like to make it more concise, to make it more coherent and just to make it look better, right? My vocabulary was much, much richer and I had many more ideas mm. on different topics, like on the, on crime, for example. Yeah, as I, as I mentioned before, my task two topic was about criminals. I, I cannot remember like exactly, but it was like, so it was the discussion essay about uh, whether all the criminals should be put into prison. And I wrote street body essay. I basically gave not just, I, I did not just discuss these two opinions, like whether everybody should, put, should, should be kept at prison and that not everybody should, should be kept at prison. And, and I also gave my own opinion. Actually. By everybody, you mean uh, all criminals, right? Yeah, all the criminals. Yeah, because exactly. I don't want to be kept in prison. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, so all the criminals, even for the minor offenses. Uh -huh. yeah, that, that, that was my uh, writing topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of ideas. Mm -hmm. I'm just in, basically in less than two seconds, I got all the ideas that I needed for, mm -hmm. for this essay. Just everything just flashed into your mind. Yeah, exactly. I just in started typing, typing all of them. Uh -huh. and, and, and yeah, um, I don't want to like exaggerate, but I believe that I type really fast. Mm -hmm. Last time I checked, yeah, it was more than 100 words per minute. 100 words per minute. Yeah. Okay. For that reason, my task too was 530 yeah. words long. And you could write that in 40 minutes. Yeah, in less than 40 minutes, actually. Uh -huh. I checked it. I, I went to task one and checked uh -huh. it one, two. Yeah. I believe that one, one of the reasons why I got like eight, right, is because the topic was familiar. Just a day before, a day before the exam, I analyzed the top. I, I analyzed that essay. I analyzed the essay on, on, on criminals. For that reason, I had all the ideas necessary, right? If I if I didn't know the topic, probably my max score my my max score would be seven point five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, partly luck also played a part. Right. Yeah. So, what are you planning to do moving forward now that you got your IELTS eight point five and SAT fifteen twenty? Aside from uh, going for another round of um, setting the SAT test. What other plans do you have? What's what's yeah. in store? It's APs. APs. Yeah. APs are advanced placement courses, mm -hmm. and not just courses, but exams. Mm -hmm. They have just recently become available in Uzbekistan. Before that, before 2024, like September, they were only available outside Uzbekistan, like in Kazakhstan, the USA, and, and, in, and other countries. And for us to take APs, we should have either moved to another country mm -hmm. or... Um, basically <clears throat> go through some difficulties, right? Just contacting the centers that are, that are located like in Kazakhstan or in other countries, but they're just available right now, right? And everybody can, um, you know, to, to, to take, this, take these courses and set the exam at the end of, of the May, mm -hmm. yes? So I, I'm, I'm taking three courses, like three, three exams actually, um, like calculus BC, physics, and one more physics. Yeah. Basically, APs are on the level of college, like, materials. They're really hard. And I believe that APs are going to greatly boost my, my, my application because the admission officers are, are going to know that, well, I'm, if, if I aced AP, I got five. Five, five is the max score and one is, the, is, is basically failure. So if I get like five on calculus BC, which is the hardest math scores that you can ever get, like as a, as a high school, I believe, um, the, the like admission officers will know that, well, this guy knows math well, and he is gonna survive like college math, 
right? So they will be more eager to, to choose you. And also there is one more reason. So I recently found out that there is someone called a regional admission of, of, like officer. So, it's, so the regional admission officer is the admission officer that is basically as, like, assigned by, by a particular university. Like every single university has um, a, a, like regional admission officer. So that guy um, checks whether like students take all the opportunities that they are given. Like if I'm given APs, if I am able to take APs and I'm not taking them, the original admission officers will know that and they will be less likely to choose me. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's what I heard actually. Yeah, and for that reason, I'm taking all the, all the opportunities that I'm given that I am able to, to take. Not just AP, SAT, IELTS, but also some opportunities. Um, but there are a lot of open-wear courses, right, provided by different universities. And the admission officers want, to, want you to basically um, seize the, those opportunities. Yeah, that, that's what I'm trying to do. So and it just goes to show that you're not going to waste the opportunities you'll be afforded by the, your prospective university yeah. once you get in, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what I heard, like for now, is that universities do not compare you with other students. Mm -hmm. They compare you with you you could have become. Mm -hmm. Like imagine, like me. I, I mean, I just want to become, let's say, an aerospace engineer, mm -hmm. and I'm doing everything that I can. I'm, I, I'm, I'm basically applying for internships in different like organizations where I might be, you know, chosen, and. I am basically seizing all these opportunities. And the admission officers see that I'm doing all of that. So I believe they will be more eager to choose me, right? But if I just, you know, sit at one place, I just have SAT, IELTS, APs, and that's all. I don't have anything else. Um, they, they would be less likely to, to choose me. Yeah. And for that reason, I'm in a constant look for all the opportunities that I can take. Yeah. I'm applying for different programs like FLAGS, uh, YYGS, uh, basically different um, camps in the USA and basically camps that would um, make me a better, better applicant. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do for now, right now, yeah. But the main objective is of course AP. I, I, well, I'm thinking like APs at the end of this year, at the end of the educational year, so it's May, yeah. I'm taking all these three like APs and then SAT. So this is basically the ultimate goal for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably, um, by the way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be getting like, I'm gonna be provided with different opportunities and everything I believe is down, down the road, yeah. But for now, APs and SAT um, are, are two main objectives, yeah. I really wonder why you decided to go down the path of becoming an aerospace engineer aerospace engineer yeah, exactly. right someone who builds rockets yeah right yeah he's talking about like the nasa rockets like yes. spacex rockets yeah. why, why is that why do you want to become an engineer i've always i've been always fascinated by stars mm -hmm. i've been always fascinated by something that is really hard that is really challenging and once i am capable of cracking that 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 problem it sort of makes me really happy sort of makes me, you know, go beyond my boundaries, yeah? At the beginning, I thought that, well, I'm just another guy mm -hmm. and I can basically do anything except for like selling goods or, mm -hmm. or anything that like modern like teenagers are doing. I mean, I saw that initially, but then I had sort of um, shifted my perspective. I, I, want, I basically wanted to do something that is really hard, that would be really impactful. And engineering is one of those spheres where I can make an impact. I believe that my math is good. I believe that my physics is good. And I believe that I am quite a creative person. And I believe that these are the skills that would help me to be a good aerospace engineer. Apart from all of these um, reasons, I'll be making a lot of money, <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, building rockets is quite hard, I believe, because uh, it requires you to be professional in all the spheres, like in chemistry, physics, math, and, and it also requires you to be persuasive. Yeah, not many people understand that engineers uh, must be convincing because to build a rocket, you need money, you need like investment, right? Um, for example, il il like Elon Musk, he 
well, from what I know, he doesn't necessarily like fund his own projects, like the, the Starlink. He asks money from Congress, right? And um, a good engineer should also be not just a nerd, like a typical nerd with, with good um, knowledge and mass, physics, and etc. But he, he also should be convincing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that guy should also like improve his communicating skills. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's also what I'm doing. I am trying to become, you know, more of a convincing person. Yeah. That's why I'm paying like much attention on IELTS. Like mm-hmm. IELTS basically makes you confident, right? If you know like language well, you can talk, you, you can basically convince anybody, right? If I'll be able to basically um, speak in English 100% fluently, 100% perfectly, I am 100% sure that I can convince anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For that reason, I'm, again, like spending mm-hmm. like a lot of time on, on, on English, on, on learning English. Yes. Yeah. So having the gift of the gap and persuasive persuasion, yeah. good persuasion skills yeah. is not something you only need for sales something also you need in building rockets yeah so what an insight yeah Yeah. what are some other qualities you admire about elon musk well he's extremely dedicated Mm -hmm. yeah i mean he spends like hours days weeks months years (laughs) years decades exactly and he never stops when when he fails Mm -hmm. you know that before like um you know, sending the rocket to space successfully. Mm-hmm. He had so many failures. Mm-hmm. He wasted, actually, he, I don't want to say like wasted. He basically... Um, spent. Yeah, he, he spent like a lot of rockets. Mm-hmm. He, he basically um, spent billions of dollars, actually. I mean, building rockets, I mean, it's quite expensive. <laughs> yeah, it's and, not like building a yeah. toy car, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the rockets you were talking about. And yeah. he... Like, basically all of these, like, unsuccessful rockets exploded. Mm -hmm. You can basically say that they vanished. Like, Mm -hmm. all of this, like, millions of dollars spent on rockets Mm -hmm. vanished. But he never stopped, right? Mm -hmm. He continued. He actually modernized his, his, like, engines, right, that he uses for for Starlink for different rockets. And that's what I admire. And he actually sort of idle for me. Mm -hmm. I always look, look for him. I mean... He is extremely dedicated. He learns from his mistakes and he never give up. Mm-hmm. And, and he never give up, right? Right. Yeah. He, people, some people describe him as the real life version of Tony Stark. <laughs> yeah. Iron Man. Yeah, probably that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, he, he's the closest thing you'll ever get to Iron Man, right? Yes. Yes. I mean, he's a, he's a ro- rocket scientist. He is basically a very, very skillful, sk- mm-hmm. skillful engineer. Mm-hmm. And of course, he's very, very, very rich. He's the richest person yeah. in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And for that reason, I consider him to be my idol. He never gives up. He mm-hmm. always learns from his mistakes. And he's extremely dedicated. Basically, these are three ingredients to become successful. Right. I mean, do all of this and you're going to get nine. Do all of this and you're going to get 1,600. It just depends on the um, on the amount of dedication that you spend, mm-hmm. right? For example, it's not always enough to believe in yourself. It's it's also necessary to do everything that you can, right? To to do whatever you wanna you you, you wanna to get, right? If I want to get nine, for example, um, I'm not just gonna believe that I'm gonna get nine. I'm gonna do everything that I can to get nine, mm-hmm. right? And I believe that that's your philosophy, right? I mean, just believe in yourself and and do everything that you can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's called dedication. All right. Yeah. This is what I usually tell students when they tell me uh, they're worried about their exam results. That when they're worried, they're gonna be disappointed if they fail to get their you know, dream score. And here's what I tell them usually: I tell them, okay, if you just do everything you can possibly do in your power. Just do your best. When I say do your best, like maximum effort, not like pretend to do your best, but actually do your best. Even if you go and fail the test, 
fail to get your desired score, your dream score, you're not going to be disappointed because you know you did your best. Yeah. You could not have possibly pushed yourself any harder. Yes. So you all, you'd only be disappointed in yourself if you knew deep in your heart, right, or your mind, that you did not push yourself the hardest. Yeah. That that exactly what happened mm -hmm. back in December when I took mm -hmm. my first house. Mm -hmm. For for seven point five for my first house, mm -hmm. I, right? I was preparing. I really believed that I, I was gonna get like eight, like at least eight, because I I I really believed that I, I could get eight. But it turns out that I didn't do much. I I spent much of my time doom scrolling, mm -hmm. right? I mean now looking back at myself, I see that I wasn't that that much of a dedicated person, mm -hmm. right? But if I wasn't, mm -hmm. if if I was dedicated, my SAT and IELTS wouldn't be ones that I have right now. Mm -hmm. Because as I told you before, you should learn from your lessons. If you don't have that lesson, you're not going to learn from that. And you're not going to basically um, acquire a new skill. Um, basically, during my IELTS like exam, uh, during my first IELTS journey, I didn't do much, right? And only after I took my IELTS test first, mm -hmm. I understood that, I realized that. And from, from that moment on, I basically put all myself in one thing. I, I just become extremely dedicated, like very dedicated mm -hmm. for IELTS. I think only about IELTS. For SAT, I think only about SAT. For APs, I think only about SAT, mm -hmm. like APs. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's what you need for, 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 for a... Like perfect score, I believe. Right. Yeah. A quick question I got here. Like, where do you find that level of focus to stay, to keep your eye on the same ball the entire time? How do you, how do you, how do you block out all distractions? What's your mechanism for that? Or if you ever find yourself, say, drifting, right? You're not thinking about your mission anymore. How do you? pull yourself back together how do you how do you put your mind back in the in the in that ad space yeah how do you dial yourself back in what do you do i have had these experiences in my yeah. life yes and what i did i just closed my eyes mm -hmm. and took like a couple of minutes for reflection mm -hmm. like understanding what i'm doing right now and like what i'm going like what I'm doing right now, is it, is it helpful? Is it like, is it going to make a difference? Mm -hmm. If, if the moment, if, if the answer to these questions is like, no, you're not doing enough. You, you're basically just facing your time. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be useful at all. I just make myself do what I need to do. Right. For example, if it's, well, let's say it's like 8 PM. Right. And I'm writing like essay. And at one moment, I don't have the inspiration. I just mm -hmm. forget that I need to be motivated. I just, I'm not motivated enough, right? So what I do, as I told you before, just one minute reflection, I look at what I'm doing and I just consider all the possibilities. I mean, if I just stop writing essays, um, how it's gonna reflect on my, on my IELTS score, how, how it's gonna reflect on my discipline. And basically, what will happen if I continue? Well, if I continue, I'm going to be finishing one more essay and it's going to be just um, an extra essay to, to my collection. It's going to be really helpful, right? My L score is likely to be um, positively impacted. Yeah, that, that, that's what I do. Yeah, mm -hmm. and actually this lesson I, I learned from you. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you always told me like to do this reflections, like one minute, two, two, two minute reflection, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Powerful. Very powerful. Yeah. Having reflections, the ability to. Yeah, that's something I admire about you, being this young and still realizing all these things. We did quite a bit of talking about your studies. Now, what do you say we take a break from education and talk a little about your personal life and your interests? So what do you do outside learning and studying? Well, when I was doing SAT and IELTS, mm -hmm. uh, like when I was in the AM and when I was doing SAT, I didn't have time for my own interests, mm -hmm. right? I, I, of course, like, um, learn more about astronomy mm -hmm. and about the math that I like. 
but after like taking IELTS, after getting 8.5, uh, I'm, I'm, these days I'm having a lot of time for myself. Mm -hmm. And I have basically picked out one of my hobbies, mm -hmm. and that's volleyball. Volleyball. Yeah. Okay. So it's basically a sport, team based game, really amazing game. Mm -hmm. And I've not just started doing it for fun, I'm doing it to make an impact, right? So what I'm doing is that I have already um, basically built up a team and we won the school level competition already. Mm -hmm. And soon, in about like two weeks, we're having um, city level competition. Yes, and I hope that they're gonna get the gold and probably go to nationals. Because mm -hmm. whatever I'm doing, I wanna make it like to the max. I wanna bring it to the max. I wanna just um, get everything that I can from from what I'm doing. Yeah, you're super yeah. competitive. I know that. Yeah, yeah. If I'm doing like football, I want to be the best football player. If I'm doing the like physics, I want to be the best physics, f mm -hmm. like physicist, right? Mm -hmm. So a person should be, a per person should do what whatever he he he's best at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and volleyball is is one of those let's say spheres. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And what got you into volleyball? Um, well, it's a team-based game. Basically, it's... Um, how did it start? Like, how did you get into volleyball? Like, of all the yeah. sports out there, you... It's an odd choice, because I don't know many guys who are into volleyball over here. I know yeah. a lot of guys are into soccer. I know a lot of guys into mm -hmm. boxing. I know yeah. a lot of guys into karate. Yeah. But volleyball... Well, right? yeah. I'm basically good at volleyball. I don't know why, but I've always been good at volleyball. Because uh, you're tall. Yeah, because uh, I'm yeah. tall. Yeah. <laughs> For that reason, my, my, my position is near the net. I just, mm -hmm. I just block the attackers. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, makes it easy. That, that what actually, that's what I do when I play volleyball. I just, I just sit near the net right. and block the attackers. Right. And, and of course, there are some rules. I, mm -hmm. I should move around the like, field. But anyways, I like the volleyball because I can play it. And mm -hmm. I am better than like everybody at my class at least, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I know that. While in soccer, well, soccer is too, too, like, too competitive because everybody plays soccer, mm -hmm. right? And everybody plays it like since their childhood, right? <laughs> and, and volleyball, well, basically like- It's a niche push. sport, yeah. yeah, niche sport. Yeah, niche sport. So basically push to playing volleyball was from the enemy mm -hmm. called volleyball. Mm -hmm. I just saw that, well, it's, it's such an interesting game. You play with your team. And volleyball, you are not able to win in volleyball alone. For that reason, you, you need to have uh, good relationships with your, with your teammates. Mm -hmm. And all of my teammates are my really good friends, really close friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So n not only that, volleyball teaches you basically discipline because you're going to attend all the training sessions. And... It makes you like disciplined because there are like basically fixed timings of, of the like training sessions and you, you must attend all of them, right? And apart from that, um, you basically improve your physique. Yeah, uh, I've been always bad at, at, at physical part. Mm -hmm. Basically, I'm not uh, pumped up. I don't, I don't have like chest or, or like big biceps, mm -hmm. but volleyball is very interesting. And it's a sport. So basically, if you combine all of this, you have a like, well-built guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah, very much like other team sports yeah. with volleyball too. You get to learn how to coordinate yeah. with your team members, right? Exactly. You learn how to, be, how to get disciplined, how to stay grounded, right? And uh, not to mention stay fit. Yes. Right? Yes. That's why I picked up volleyball. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of everything. Yeah, but well, football is the same. Well, the soccer actually, yeah, soccer. Well, soccer also provides all of this, but I'm not particularly good at soccer, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I don't, I don't have that sort of stamina to run for 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 for, for the whole like so soccer field. It's like too much for me. <laughs> it's basically not my suit. But but volleyball is a is a different story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't need to run. It's well, volleyball. What I like. The, the other thing that I like about volleyball is that it's a mind game. You play against your opponents, like with your is your tactics. Like you, you must have certain um, tactics. Like you should 
probably have some gestures, right? To, to, to show your teammate to do this mm -hmm. or this and to trick your opponent. Mm -hmm. And well, what are some gestures you guys use uh, <laughs> while playing volleyball? Um, well, <laughs> well, well, it might be quite like, sp mm -hmm. like specific. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you have never played volleyball, mm -hmm. basically in volleyball, um, somebody serves. So everything starts start with a serve. Mm -hmm. And when your opponent serve, mm -hmm. a guy called Libra in your team basically set the, set the ball. It, it receives the ball. Then, then the ball goes to setter, and the setter need to. So the setter is the guy who who give passes, mm -hmm. right? So that guy should should decide to whom give a pass mm -hmm. to me, to the middle blocker, mm -hmm. or to the attacker, to, to the different guy. Mm -hmm. So we basically use this sort of <laughs> like gesture mm -hmm. to show that it's gonna be me. Uh, so what does this gesture mean? Uh, it means that it's gonna be me. It's it means that the setter is going to like pass the ball to me mm -hmm. and I'm going to attack mm -hmm. while the other guy is just going to be, let's say, um, how to say it? Um, he's just going to pretend that he's going to attack, but he's not going to attack just to trick the blockers. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that's what I like about the volleyball too. You make like different gestures. You, you, you basically come up with different tactics. Yeah. And, that's what I like about volleyball. Yeah, I, li I like volleyball. Right, right. So you're saying that your interest in volleyball came out of an anime you watched? <laughs> yeah, partly. Right. Yeah, like yeah. like 70, 80 percent. Do you watch anime a lot? Do you uh, like watching anime? What kind of anime do you watch apart from? That? <laughs> uh, well, I'm not like really into anime. Uh -huh. I have my I I have some of my friends who watched about a hundred animes. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of let's say amateur guy. Yeah, <laughs> but. My favorite anime would be the Demon Slayer. So Demon Slayer is a really popular anime. It's about like, um, let's say it's a fantasy, mm -hmm. yeah? And that's a really interesting anime actually. And I believe that vast majority of viewers probably watch that, yeah? The, the Demon Slayer. Well, it's not as popular as let's say Naruto or the Attacks on Titan. But Demon Slayer is what I like. It's not it's not very long, like Naruto that got one thousand episode one thousand episodes and you're likely gonna die <laughs> before watching all of them, right? Mm -hmm. Like like the Demon Slayer is basically uh like a couple of seasons and it's quite captivating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ba basically this is not this is unfinished project. Um we are basically having um some more movies to come out, right? And like different seasons, like in the future, probably in 2025 spring. Yeah. And I'm like looking forward to it. Yeah. 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 So outside volleyball, what other interests do you have? Do you like, do you listen to podcasts? Do you like watching movies? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably the biggest m movie buff uh -huh. and biggest cinema goer. Uh -huh. Whenever there is like blockbuster out there in the cinema, uh -huh. I always buy tickets first. Uh -huh. And I'm the first person who who, who see like in the in, in those halls like in cinema, mm -hmm. and I'm a big movie fan because movies give you inspiration. Mm -hmm. There are different characters, right? And instead of like seeing all of these characters like developing in a real world, you can you, you can basically see them developing in the movie, right? I'm not telling that every single movie is great, and I'm not telling that every single and I'm not telling that every single movie is bad. Basically, there are some masterpieces like The Fight Club or, or the Django Unchained, right? You're not old enough to watch those movies. <laughs> They're R-rated, you know that, right? <laughs> Let's just say... Uh, <laughs> I hope you guys didn't hear that part. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to ask the editor guy to bleep this, the, that part. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So basically, I watch movies every time I have a free time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for example, the last movies that I watched was the uh, was the Batman, the new one, twenty twenty two. Was the uh, uh, Robert Pattinson? Yeah, that guy, Robert yeah. Pattinson. Of I course, the movie was really dark, uh -huh. right, and had this sort of atmosphere of mm -hmm. of of, of death. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that kept you basically interested in the in that movie. That what the Batman is. That's why I like watching basically the same story from different angles. For example. There are like five, six movies about Batman, right? Mm -hmm. Directed by different directors and by different actors, like the Christian Bale or the or or Ben Affleck. Yeah, 
Ben Affleck or, mm-hmm. and, and other guys, right? Mm-hmm. You basically see the same story from different angles. Mm-hmm. And that's interesting. I believe that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything started basically back again in, in, in our journey. I, I heard that watching movies help you to, to improve your, your English level, like your listening skills and basically your, 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 your speaking because you're going to get some language from there. You're going to get some authentic language, right? Something that they use, common language, and not robot or um, academic language. And I started like watching movies like probably once or twice a week, but then everything like became a little bit more frequent. So a day, I cannot go without a movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you watch a movie every night? I, yeah, I do. Still? At least lastly, at least like last two months. Yeah. So what's, what was the last movie you watched and did you like it? Yeah, this Batman 2022. I, I really oh, yeah, liked it. Right, I, right. I really Imagine liked that. it. I really liked it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, basically, the visuals were great. Mm-hmm. The the order check was quite great. I, I, I really liked it, basically. The sound effects. Yeah, yeah, right? the, the sound effects, yeah. Uh-huh. They were modern. It was 2022. It's, uh-huh. it's a Batman 2022. And yeah. what I liked about the recent movies that I watched that movie, uh-huh. the, the Batman, it's called The Batman, is that it's real. It talks about real people with real emotions. Uh-huh. While the previous one, with the uh, like Justice League, I believe mm-hmm. it was it it was basically um, fictional. While that is a real story of like a real man, mm-hmm. right? And it felt real. If if there was like a city named Gotham, <laughs> there the must be like a Batman. And mm-hmm. this is like the closest uh, real life movie, lastly I've ever seen. Yeah, Th- mm-hmm. that's like real life movie. Yes. Well, apart from this movie, like probably uh, second latest was the uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm-hmm. It's a it's an autobiography. Another R rated movie. What are you doing watching all these R rated movies? You're not supposed to be seeing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. basically, basically that's the um, story of of a uh, Freddie Mercury. Uh-huh. You probably know the singer. Oh, I yeah. I know I know you have been like singing his songs. The Bohemian Rhapsody and different songs. This is the real life. Yeah. This is all fantasy. Yeah. Open your eyes and see. <laughs> Mama <laughs> just killed a man. Put a gun yeah. against his head. Pull that's the trigger. Now he's dead. Yeah, of course. That's the masterpiece. Yeah. That's the masterpiece. And I was really curious to, to see what was behind, what was the inspiration behind these uh-huh. the songs, actually. Mm-hmm. And the Fred Mercury was a different person. Like he was a completely different person. He didn't quite care about other people's opinions, right? Mm-hmm. He did whatever he liked. Mm-hmm. For that reason, he succeeded. Right. Yeah. I, I heard like one quote like a couple of years ago. If you do whatever you like, if you if you find a job that you like, you will be never have to work again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if and you love what you do, you don't work a day in your in your life. Yeah, yeah, this sort of quote, but it was something along those yeah, lines. You're different. Right. Yeah, so right. basically, the the alternative was this quote. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that what that was movie about. But that quote, honestly, I think is a myth. Because even if you love what you do, there are days when you hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Just because do you hate, yeah, like in, I mean, I English. can't say I I I on, I cannot say with a straight face I show up to work every day with the same energy with the same passion right yeah Yeah. it's just like it's just like you know motivation sometimes it's there sometimes it's not there Mm -hmm. it's like muse inspiration sometimes you're inspired pumped excited to do it sometimes it's not just there yeah right yeah so so yeah that was you you know you're you love what you're doing if you keep doing what you're doing even if you don't like it yeah and you know you know that you actually like it that's how you can tell someone actually do like what they're doing even if they hate doing it they keep doing it not exactly because they needed to pay the bills but they know it needs to be done yes like when i asked you don't you think it's too late it's time to go home it's getting late and you say uh, this podcast needs to be done yes see yeah right that that's the kind of attitude you need yes that would go to show that would go to show that you actually love what you're doing yeah 
I believe yeah. that because love is not all sweet. Yes. Yeah, love is not all sweet. People associate love with passion, with、uh, all those fuzzy, warm feelings, right? But it's more nuanced than that.、Mm, yes. Yeah. So I believe that this was the philosophy behind that that、mm. movie,、mm. and I would recommend like every, everybody to watch that movie.、Mm. Like, Honestly, in, I, movie. I, I, I have never watched that movie. I only watched the beginning, like probably like、mm-hmm. five minutes, and they don't bother to watch the rest because I have. I have a bias. My favorite Batman is Ben Affleck Batman. Oh yeah, is the one in Justice League. <laughs> yeah, because he looks more comic, comic accurate, accurate Batman.、Mm. In the comics, Batman is supposed to be really strong and buff, not skinny like Robert Pattinson Batman. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. And 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 his, his vocal modulator, his voice is yeah, yeah. something different,、yes. something else. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. It was basically different when he was in into suit. Uh-huh. He basically transformed from 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 the Bruce Wayne, yeah, from from the Bruce Wayne to Batman, Batman,、like、vigilant, Bruce Wayne, Batman, different、yeah. people, yeah. Here's something is fun fact about、uh, Batman's. So with Christian Bale, he did his Batman voice himself without no with no sound effects, with no modulator. Ben Affleck though did have a voice modulator, and I actually like that idea because make make that. Voice modulator that made it made his voice deep,、yeah. made it made him sound more like a Batman, scarier, and you needed that element that would that was missing in other Batmans,、yes. right? The, and th- this guy Robert Pattinson, does he use a mis- voice modulator? No, yeah, no it's it's natural, it's natural. It's his voice. Yeah, yeah, voice. it's it's his own voice. Yeah, yeah. You you you're in, into Batman actually? Yeah, I, yeah. You 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 had that like shirt? I still do. Yeah, yeah. I, I wear it. <laughs> People say that I'm a big Batman fan. I used to be, but not anymore. I feel like I'm growing out of that age. <laughs> and the reason why I always wear, wear a Batman T-shirt is because I don't have many T-shirts. <laughs> I have I have only like three or four. So don't be surprised if you see me wearing the same T-shirt every 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 other day, right, guys? Yes, <laughs> because I got just a handful of T-shirts. Yeah, over、right. the course of like AM, I've seen you wearing probably four T-shirts <laughs> yeah, only. Only、like、this one, Batman and Adastra, Ad- probably like two. Adastra. That's all. And then I have one Beverly Hills T-shirt. Yes, that, yes, that one's yes, my favorite. Yes, yes. And then I have this T-shirt, and yeah, that's it. Three, four, three, four T-shirts. Yeah. Right. Anyway, I, we did quite a bit of talking about your personal interests as well, and we are. I think we're about to wrap it up. And before we do that. I want to ask you some questions about philosophy. I don't think you're too young to talk philosophy, right? Yes, right. I do think so. so sounds very much like you have some、uh, devel- developed, well-formed views on life,、yeah. or at least still being formed, developed some concept, some idea of. So, what what is your philosophy in life right now? So, I don't quite have like a pretty concise philosophy. Well,、mm-hmm. I've never figured out for now. But there is like one thing that I always stick to: age is but a number.、Mm-hmm. Age doesn't re- represent your real life, like、mm-hmm. let's say skills.、Mm-hmm. What what this means? It means that you are never too old to learn lessons, and you are never too young、mm-hmm. to teach someone a lesson,、mm-hmm. right? So. All I remember myself, like back back in again, like early Al's Al, Al's journey, I always consider myself to be like young, inexperienced, immature, and I had those like stereotypes that I'm immature, inexperienced. That's why I'm I'm gonna fail. Others are older than me; they're better than me. But now, I understood that no, that's not true.、Mm-hmm. It all depends on yourself, not on on the age.、Mm-hmm. Age again, it's it's just a number,、mm-hmm. right? Just a two digit number, and. Like me getting eight point five proves that anybody can get eight point five, even nine, even nine.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it will not be surprised that if in the future, like someone、mm-hmm. at the age of fourteen gets nine.、Uh, I honestly see that coming. I see it coming. You know why? Because I see a lot of guys,、uh, seventh grade, sixth grade, signing up for programs here. Yes, they get it. They're getting an early start. Yes,、like、they start now.、Yes. Imagine what what they're gonna be in two years' time. Exactly. Yeah, by the time they turn thirteen or fourteen, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that that's what I'm tell that's、yeah. what I'm saying basically. Yeah, age, age,、mm-hmm. age is not representation of your skills. Yeah, as、exactly. long as they're consistent, though. Exactly. As long as they don't lose that、yeah. motivation they had、yeah. on day one. Yes, yes,、right. that's that's what I want to say. 
What's one piece of advice you'd give your younger self? Uh, just believe in yourself and do mm-hmm. everything that you're able to do that will lead you to the success. Mm-hmm. I did not understand it. I just had only, only, only the second part, but not the first part. I never believed that I could get 8.5 or 1600. Mm-hmm. That's why I didn't get 1600 in my first mm-hmm. attempts or, or, or like 8.5 in my first attempt. But now you believe it's possible. Yeah, I believe it's more than possible because mm-hmm. I see Niners here getting nine. I, I, I see that um, there are like guys who are, who are getting 15, 90. Mm-hmm. And, and there are guys who are at, at my age and they're basically better than me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what basically fuels my motivation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. And you really, need, you really need this quality that believing in yourself when you... You're going into fields like engineering where you have to be creative, not just creative, but also have unshakable faith or belief that it's going to work. Yes. Even if the entire world tells it's not. Yes. Right. Yes. You really need that quality as, an, as a future aerospace engineer. When everyone else tells it's mm-hmm. impossible to travel beyond our galaxy, you yes. say, no, we can't. Of course we can. Yeah, at least we can put the seeds. We can sow the seeds today. Yeah, so. that, that's possible, actually. Right. I mean, more than possible. More than possible, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you ever go beyond this galaxy, please do send me a text message. Say, hey, teacher, <laughs> I'm in Galaxy. Andromeda. In, in, yeah. Uh, with Galaxy? Andromeda. It's the closest galaxy that you can. Like, yeah. Basically. Send a selfie from that galaxy. Basically, it's going to take more than a thousand years to, to uh-huh. reach you. More than a thousand More years. More than a thousand years. Uh, basically, our galaxy is 100,000 light yeah. years across. Uh, I'll, I'll be long gone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> by the time we, that message gets delivered, <laughs> by the time that message gets sent. Well, well, there are, of course, some theories. I mean, we can do it in, the, in less than like a microsecond. But, but sure, it's all of them are serious, mm-hmm. like the wormhole theory. Yeah, or how about like you open a portal? That's called the wormhole. Wormhole. Yeah, that's, that's sort of the, um, let's say alternative for the portals mm-hmm. it's a wormhole it's basically you're you're basically um going through the space time mm-hmm. faster than the speed of light right mm-hmm. S- speed of light yeah mm-hmm. and if you do that it's basically impossible technically from the like physics from, from the stand, standpoint of physics mm-hmm. but if you open op, open up sort of the portals mm-hmm. like from like two ends mm-hmm. like from from destination a to destination b mm-hmm. you can just enter one wormhole like one one portal and then mm-hmm. go out of the other one yeah and it may not be actually uh, here's my theory yeah. i'm a little bit of a nerd as well here okay sure. so you're not the only nerd in the room sure. so here's my theory my theory is to make that possible you're we're not going to be able to physically travel but rather rather teleport our consciousness from one dimension or one you, you know, point in space to another point in space. Yeah. Not our physical bodies. Right. Is that, does it sound plausible or well, that's like too far fetched and it's unrealistic. I know. Yeah. I know. But, but technically that's, that holds a truth. Mm-hmm. Well, if you imagine like a universe as three dimensional, mm-hmm. like think, then you will never ever be able to travel to, like from, from one part of your galaxy to the other mm-hmm. part. Because mm-hmm. it's going to take you more than 100,000 years. Mm-hmm. But if you imagine universe to be like four-dimensional, mm-hmm. five-dimensional, anything is possible. Because you can just travel from, f- from like another dimension, right? You can travel from like one part of the universe to the other part mm-hmm. in, in the matter of seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but all, of, all of these are serious. Well, of course, they are like being proven by like, um, le- le- let's say authentic experimental studies mm-hmm. yeah right right yes i mean people are going to space now like uh, 200 years ago people thought you're crazy if you said you would be burned alive. yeah you'd be yeah you'd be burned alive if you said that one day we're gonna go to the moon or go to space yeah. or reach the stars but you know, we're living you in that era right now we're yeah. living through the uh, through through those 
moments. Yeah, yeah. Where things are possible now. Science, basically. Right. That's called science. Where everything is is proven. Yeah. Like science. In the past, people didn't believe in science. They they saw that it's just um, witchcrafting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But 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 in reality, it's all just mm-hmm. magic. Is basically un- understood mm-hmm. science. Yeah. Yeah. If you give like a phone mm-hmm. to a caveman, he's mm-hmm. gonna think that that's like a god. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. Right. 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 Uh, but but in reality, but but in reality, it's just a phone, and we know how it works. Yeah. Right? Well, we don't know like how the universe works right now. No. As far as I'm concerned, I don't have those opportunities that guys in Berkeley have. But in the future, we're gonna learn much more, right? With all of these um, observations and the experimental studies, everything is gonna be possible. Yeah, I'm sure about that. Yeah. So am I. I don't know why, but something tells me that it is gonna be possible. Yes. As long as you keep doing what you're doing. Yes. Right. So say this podcast is being watched by your future self. What's something you would say to your future version? And you might want to say hi to him right now. He's yeah, watching hi. it. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, <clears throat> basically, I hope that you're like believing yourself. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I hope that you have achieved whatever you, I want to do. Uh, basically, getting into MIT. Mm-hmm. Um, like becoming a real aerospace engineer. Mm-hmm. Well, if I watch it like in 20 years, I hope that I have my own, um, let's say a company, mm-hmm. right? My, my own organization where I'm, I'm gonna be a boss, right? A CEO. I hope that I'm gonna be that kind of person. And currently I'm doing that. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm working on that. Yes, that, that's what I want mm-hmm. to say to my future self. I, I wanna say something else to your future self. I hope you still remember the promise you made me. You promised me to send a photo of you standing next to SpaceX. Starship, yeah. Yeah, Starship. Uh, SpaceX headquarters. I'm still waiting for that photo. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I guess we're done sending messages to your future self. We are, uh, we're about to finish this podcast. Now, do you have any comments you'd like to make before we end this? I just want to say thank you for inviting me to this podcast. It, it, It was just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it was fantastic yeah. having you on the show too. Yeah, just ju- just talking on different topics, education, mm-hmm. personal life, and dance philosophy. Yeah, th- th- that was just great. Yeah, I I haven't been speaking sp- spoken like in English for a long time after <laughs> after getting eight point five. Right. <laughs> yeah, and and it's nice to be here in Industria. Yeah, it's nice to have you too, buddy. And this place is always open to you. Sure. So you can come and say hi whenever you like. Sure. Yeah. All right, guys. That's, I guess, all for today. Hope you enjoyed today's podcast. If you liked our content, please like, subscribe, and leave your comments in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.